Hi everyone, I'm Steven and today I'm making Iron Man's Infinity Gauntlet out of cardboard. If you're curious, please subscribe, like this video, and let's get to it! My plan for this project is to make the gauntlet in two pieces, a cone for my forearm and a glove for the hand. The two pieces allow me to move my hand and wrist while wearing the gauntlet. I started by making a cone out of poster board for my arm and taped the seam together with masking tape. I went to the dollar store for a pair of gloves to use as a base for the hand. Iron Man's gauntlet is on his right hand, so I used the right glove. Throughout this entire build, I stuffed and unstuffed the glove with newspaper. Stuffing it helped the glove maintain its shape so I could use both hands to cut and glue. Anyway, the bottom of the gauntlet tapers in at the bottom. To get this thin, inward facing angle, I taped a bunch of scrap cereal box cardboard to the inside of the cone and angled all these pieces inward. After applying additional tape so all these scrap pieces were stuck together, I carefully removed it, trimmed it down to the desired width, and then traced that piece onto a solid piece of poster board. Basically, I just made a template out of some scraps and then traced it onto a fresh piece of poster board so it would look nice and clean on the actual gauntlet. Once it was cut out, I connected it to the cone with more masking tape, keeping the tape on the inside of the cone so the outside would remain nice and clean. See? It looks so fresh and so clean. To start on the detail work, I layered a piece of paper onto the arm piece and sketched out how big I wanted the gauntlet's forearm blaster to be. I cut out what I drew and then traced that shape onto corrugated cardboard. This is the base layer of the blaster. I used the corrugation lines to help curve this piece to match the curve of my arm and then put it off to the side. I wrapped the top of the arm piece in a band of poster board to help me figure out where the stripes around the wrist will go. I then moved back to the base layer of the blaster and then cut in an opening that matched the shape that I saw in some reference photos online. Side note, this project involved a lot of pieces that I kept going back and forth to trim or change, so please forgive me if it seems like I'm jumping around. With that cutout done, I moved back to the band and gave it the angular design that I saw in some reference photos. It's difficult to see it right now in the video, but the back side of this band shifts up at your wrist. That band got super glued onto the top of the arm piece. I glued on the corrugated cardboard base layer on top of the arm piece with super glue, although in hindsight, hot glue probably would have been fine. When that dried, I cut out a strip from cereal box cardboard and glued it onto the top band to emulate the stripes Iron Man has around his wrist. I decided I wanted the stripe a little bit thicker, so I doubled it up and glued on another layer. I also doubled up the layers for the next strip, however I didn't double up the very top strip. It's barely noticeable, but in my mind it helped make the wrist portion look a little bit more tapered. I trimmed off any of the excess and then started building up the blaster with more corrugated cardboard. I stacked three pieces of cardboard on top of each other with the plan to cover them up later on in this build. However, like I just said, I jumped around when building this, so instead of doing that immediately, I moved over to pieces that kind of look like racing stripes that run down each side of the forearm. The actual gauntlet in Avengers Endgame has four racing stripes down each side, but three look better on the one I'm building, so that's what I did. Similar to the strips at the top, the first two racing strips were doubled up with two layers of cardboard, and the third strip only got one layer. I carefully glued them on and then cut off the excess. If you're ever building a prop that has long strips of something, it's almost always better to make that piece longer and then just cut off the overhang. I do that all the time and it gives me clean lines. Anyway, on the back of this arm piece, I covered up the bottom of the seam on the cone with a rectangle of cardboard that I bent to fit. It makes it look a little cleaner and this detail is actually on the real Iron Man gauntlet. See? I think it looks kind of cool so far. So back to the blaster. Remember the three stacks of corrugated cardboard? I decided it was time to cover them up so it would look sleek and streamlined. I did this by laying on a piece of paper that I cut into the shapes that I wanted. I then traced those shapes onto poster board, cut them out, and super glued them onto the blaster. The poster board curves really nicely and I like that it cleanly covers up any of the bumpy corrugated lines that were noticeable before. Okay, so now onto the glove. I traced my hand onto a piece of paper so I could see where my knuckles were located. I sketched out a rectangular shape with some knuckles to act as the base layer for the top of the glove and cut it out of corrugated cardboard. However, this doesn't exactly cover the part of the hand where the thumb meets the hand. So I used masking tape to tape all around the thumb and drew on some cut lines. I peeled it off carefully and then taped the back side of it with more tape to give myself a template that I could then trace onto some cereal box cardboard. 
I recommend using cereal box cardboard instead of poster board for this because it's a little sturdier than poster board and you don't want it to bend. I put that off to the side and then started on the rest of the fingers. For each finger, I layered out two rectangles per joint per finger and bent them around each finger so they were like little boxes. However, before I glued them onto the glove, I cut out a W looking shape to represent some of the design work on the actual gauntlet. These W shapes got glued right at the bottom, right near the knuckles, and I kept the bottom layered rectangle slightly poking through the W in order to give it some depth and a little bit more of an interesting design. Then I drew on lines on each of the finger pieces. I bent the cardboard on each line to help me get everything even and to form the rest of the boxes before I started gluing them onto the glove. This is where the stuffing in the glove comes in really handy so you won't burn yourself. I started with the bottom box, then the next piece, and then this weird little finger tip piece that I made. Everything was trimmed to fit the specific finger, and if you decide to make this gauntlet, you're going to have to trim yours to fit your specific hand shape and finger lengths too. I took the stuffing out of the glove and tried it on, trimming pieces where it needed to be trimmed, and re-gluing, and I kept at it repeating this process finger by finger. By the way, I used tape to help some of these finger pieces from popping open, but as you can see, everything moves pretty nicely. I hot glued on the thumb piece that I made earlier in this video, and then the corrugated cardboard rectangular knuckle base layer. On top of that base layer, I drew on the infinity gauntlet designs and started cutting out pieces to layer on top of it. The white pieces are poster board that cover up the corrugated lines, and the bigger piece is the corrugated cardboard. I had to alter the design a little bit to fit with the proportions of my hand, so I apologize in advance to any of the purists out there. Anyway, I cut out each piece individually and super glued or hot glued them on depending on whatever glue I grabbed first. Okay, so moving on to some of the detailed design work. The center section looks like a little upside down U with two sides flared out, so I made another little template out of paper and tape and cut that U shape out of cereal box cardboard. I doubled that up in two layers and then added two more layers on top of it that were slightly smaller so it looks like this. See? Three visibly different layers. I trimmed it to fit and then started assembling all the different pieces. I glued and trimmed everything the entire time. All the glue was making this a little stiff, so I gently bent it so it would curve a little bit and fit the natural curve of my hand a little bit better. I decided that I didn't want to neglect the inside of the hand, so I quickly cut out a few shapes from cereal box cardboard to hot glue to the palm of the glove. At this point, I probably could have started painting, but the fingers looked a little bit too plain to me. So I started using all the scrap cereal box cardboard that I had around me to add on some technological looking details. This was completely done haphazardly with a zero plan, but I did keep the patterns on top of the fingers all the same to give it a uniform look while loosely following the design on the reference photos that I was referring to. This took forever, so I did most of it off camera and I hope that you guys don't mind. But once everything was hot glued and looking fancy, I tried the glove on and this is where I noticed that there was a big black opening at the back along my wrist. I needed this fabric to stay fabric because that's where I pull on the glove, so I decided to use hook and loop to attach another piece of cereal box cardboard that can be removed when I need to put the glove on. I doubled this piece up in two layers of cereal box cardboard to give it some durability, and it also has a little decorative border that I'm going to paint silver later on. To help prevent the hook and loop from ripping off the glove, I just used some super glue around the adhesive strip to help it stick. Anyway, in the home stretch now. If anyone's actually still watching, let me know your favorite Infinity Stone and why in the comments section. I'm very curious who's still watching. Anyway, so for the Infinity Stones, I cut out five hexagons and gave each one a thin border. I then crumpled tin foil and painted on each of the colors of the stones. My paint is not the exact colors, but I used what I had. I added on one last layer of details before making the most frustrating mistake I could have made. I painted the entire thing black. Do not do this. Only paint the pieces that are going to end up silver in black paint first. Red craft paint isn't opaque enough to easily cover up the black, so it took a ridiculous amount of time for me to paint over all this black paint. I used a mix of red craft paint, and then at the end, I added on a layer of metallic red craft paint. I probably did five or six layers in total of the red. 
While the layers dried, I worked on the stones. I cut the tin foil to the hexagonal shapes that would fit in these little bases that I made. I then dumped a little mound of hot glue on top of each color. The glue is going to dry clear so you can see the paint and the sparkly bumpy foil underneath and they kind of look like geodes up close. If your glue dries a little cloudy, just blast it with a hair dryer. I read online that this will help, but I personally haven't tried it. Anyway, I added some gold and silver details to the gauntlet and kept painting on those layers of red. All that's left is to super glue on the infinity stones, do some touch-ups with the paint job, and I'll be back with a finished product. So there you have it, a DIY Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet made from cardboard, masking tape, hot glue, a glove, and tin foil. It's technically called the Nano Gauntlet, but I'm fine with saying it's Iron Man since he's the one who made it. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks, although I wish I had made the Infinity Stones slightly smaller to be in proportion to my hand a little bit better. However, this hand has full articulation and it's very lightweight. Although there are some things I'd like to change about it, I like the way this cardboard gauntlet turned out. However, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd really love to hear from everyone. I'd also love it if you would subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon, everyone. Bye bye. I am Steven.